Welcome back to P3. Today we're moving on to Unit 8, Final Chapter, uh, Numerical Methods. And we're looking at locating roots. This is probably, though, the easiest section in P3. Really, really straightforward. Uh, those of you who do FP1 will have seen some or a lot of this already. So what is it? Locating roots is essentially when we're looking at when f of x equals zero, at least in the beginning. And when I've got a graph, the roots are going to be where it crosses the x axis. Now, providing that the graph or the function is continuous, as it crosses the x-axis you'll see that the value of y or f of x changes from a positive to negative or a negative to positive there's a change of sign there so you follow here you're going from minus to plus we're going from plus to minus and we're going from minus to plus so when i see the change in sign that's when i can say that there's most likely a root there so if I picked two values, for example, A and B, and I put them into my calculator, or I worked them out by putting them into my function, if I look at F of A, that's going to give me a negative value, and I look at whatever F of B is, that's going to give me a positive value, and this change of sign indicates that there should be at least one root there. Now while that's the case most of the time I do need to be a little bit careful. As for example I could have a quadratic like this and if I pick values either side of it then what I'll see is at A is a negative value and at B is a negative value and I'll think no change in sign there for no roots but in fact there were actually two roots there I could see a quadratic like we just looked at and if my a and b values are either side here you know I've got a negative value for a, a positive value for b I've got a change in sign but that change in sign actually means I've got three roots, not just the one. And then, of course, there is a reciprocal graph. Something like this, where I could pick values A and B. This A is positive, B is negative. I think there's a change in sign between them, but there is no root between them so I do have to be a little bit careful okay I need to be aware of what the function what the graph would look like and I just have to be aware of the possibilities that exist okay that is not always going to be a change in sign means a change in root but that said 99% of the questions that you're going to get in the exam it will be because it will generally ask you to show that there's a change or there is a root that lies between two values. Okay, we've got a function here, f of x equals 5 minus 2x squared minus x cubed. Show that the equation f of x equals 0 has a root alpha in the interval 1.2, 1.3. So that means 1.2 to 1.3. And all we need to do to that is substitute both of those values into my function. So substituting 1.2 in, we get 0 0.3, sorry, 3.92. And then substituting 1.3 in, and we're hoping for a changing sign a change in sign will indicate that there is a root there and we get minus 0 0.577 and now I just need to finish it off with a short sentence so something like 
there is a change in sign between 1.2 and 1.3 so there is at least one root in the interval 1.2 to 1.3 and then part b is using a suitable interval verify that alpha equals 1.242 correct to three decimal places now for this i need to go to an extra decimal place so i'm going to go to the fourth decimal place I'm thinking about what rounds off to give me that 1.242. So I'm looking at 1.2415 because that will round up to 1.242. And then I need to go above it and think of what would round down. And I go with 2.5. Now I know technically it would be two, four, nine, 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 but we usually go with a five and just think of this. It's the same where at GCSE, when we were looking at upper and lower bounds, you went to that five, even though technically it'd be four, nine, 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 going on forever with the nines. Uh, now I just need to substitute these in, show there's a change in sign, and that will verify that this is the correct answer to three decimal places. So for the first one we get 0 0.0038 and the second we get negative 0 0.00579 and then again we can go and make a statement. Okay there is a change in sign in the interval let's write it this way around this time 1.2415 1 1.2425 and then we can say so or therefore alpha equals 1.242 correct to three decimal places now a few of you are probably wondering how does this prove that this answer is correct to three decimal places? Well, quite simply, we've gone to the fourth decimal place of the value that will round up to it and the value that will round down to it. And if there's a change in sign between those two, then a root has to appear between them. And any value between them will round off to 242 or 1.242 the three decimal places okay hopefully that makes sense